will. Father in heaven, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we just come now, Father, and we just cover ourselves with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask you, Father, now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we just cover the broadcast with the blood of Jesus Christ, Father. I also pray and I break all hypnosis over the listeners, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. Everything that would want to do that and any, any yeah, anything, Father, that would just want to block the people's minds and spirits in Jesus' mighty name from what's going on. Lord, we also pray, Father, that you would open our understanding so that we would understand the scriptures in Jesus' name. And, Father, we ask also, we pray for the restoration of our soul, Father, our mind, our will, our emotions, Father, and the restoration of our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Right. Well, praise the Lord. Hey, and it's great. We did a little sound check here, too. We're coming across uh, loud and proud on the Omega Man Radio Network here. Uh, we just want to welcome and uh, praise praise the Lord. So we're doing pretty well. Um, Shannon, I just wanted to say to you here, too, today, it's that day. Uh, today is the two-year anniversary of me being on your broadcast here. And Congratulations. So, we two, so, yeah, it's two years now, Shannon. Wow. Man, where has the two years went? That's a long time. I tell, I tell you what, it... Um, I tell you what, it really, uh, <laughs> it, it, it flew by. I was surprised. I'm like, what, two years? And uh, I'll need to go through and do some counting, but I think we've already passed the 100th show that we've done together, but we should be right around there. We could celebrate that today, too, as our 100th something show. So praise the Lord. It's good to be here. We've <laughs> we've come a long way in two years, haven't we? Brother, we sure have. It's an honor to be working with you, and hey, praise the Lord. That's a great milestone there. And friends, you can tune in every week uh, right here on this same uh, time slot. And uh, we're broadcasting around the world on YouTube. And Brother Elvis, tell people about your YouTube channel. Hey, absolutely. Well, the YouTube channel is the Elvis Newhart Network. And you can go right into YouTube and just type that in. And uh, that should all come up with a whole bunch of other messages, uh, too. I'd like to welcome. I'd like to thank all the people that have listened and all the people that have subscribed. That continues to grow daily. And uh, that continues to grow daily. And we just praise the Lord for that. And you know what? It's just like the last two years, Shannon. You know, you and I have not missed very many broadcasts together. Uh, you know, we usually we're there every Thursday at the same time, same place. And it's just that uh, being faithful and, and uh, just doing it to it. And then here we are. And so that's our YouTube channel there at the Elvis Newhart Network. And uh, also um, what goes on is, uh, you know, we'd like to invite you. You can go to our website. It's hcofd.de forward, forward slash uh, uh, WordPress. And so, anyway, um, that's how to get to the actual uh, website that we're using and everything. Sorry, folks, we're just getting things set up. I'm doing some little checkings here, making sure everything's hunky-dory, but we're coming through great. And, uh, Shannon, here we go. I also, so to celebrate our two-year anniversary here, I don't know, can you hear this? Hey, that sounds can like get... candy. Yeah. Okay. Oh, man, you're so good. Boy, your spirit of discernment. Here you go. Ready? <laughs> Let's see if... Let's see if I can do it and we can hear it. Ready? Is it going to work? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I know what that is. Go ahead. Oh, oh do you know what it is? That's one of those okay, party gonna, Twizzlers. I'm, I, no, 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 no. I'm going to give you a hint. Okay. I'm going to give you a hint. It says, their commercial is, give me a break, give me a break, just give me a break of that. Um, Big Mac? Da, 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 da. Yeah, very good, Shannon. First guess, Kit Kat bar. So here Kit we Kat go. Kit Kat bar. Right there. Here we go. So here we have. Right here. Gonna, hey, look at uh, It's Thursday before Easter. Mm. Oh, oh, man. Wow. Boy. Is it a chocolate the, or is it a white chocolate Kit Kat? No, it's a dark chocolate. I don't like the white chocolate ones. Mm, excuse me. Oh, right. man. Do Mom, you have some coffee Mama to go always, with that? Ma Mama always said, don't talk with your mouth full. <laughs> mm. And I say, what mama don't know, don't hurt her. Mm. So, wow. Folks, anyway. grab a snack no, yeah. and join in on the festivities. We're, we're having a, um, a two-year birthday party today. That's awesome, man. <laughs> right. It's great. So praise the Lord. Mm. Let me now. 
let me wash down this tasty, crispy piece of chocolate with a wonderful coffee. Mm. Oh yeah, I, now that's what I'm talking I won't, about. I won't do. I won't do. A, I won't do an. Um, I won't do an advertisement. Uh, for the coffee, but I really should. So if Chibo would like me to start advertising any of their coffees during the program, we can do that. We'll take Chibo as a sponsor. That sounds like a, that, a great cup of coffee. What's of the, Chibo? I haven't heard of Chibo. Mm, Chibo is a brand here in Germany that I was ah. introduced here. They have several types of coffee. And so I went on a scientific exploration of the best tasting one over several years, and I have found that one. And so, but anyway, but like I said, Chibo, wow. if uh, you'd like to sponsor this broadcast, we'll <laughs> certainly do it. They're uh, one of the largest coffee uh, creating, importing comp- uh, companies here uh, in Germany. So praise the Lord. Uh, Kit, Kat, Kit Kat got a free um, uh, free advertisement there, but it was good. It's okay. It's for the uh, it's for the anniversary. So <laughs> praise the Lord, we did that. So yeah, and uh, Shannon, help me. Um, in Germany, they call it the Fasten site, but they call it Lent. Hmm. Oh. They call it Lent, so yeah. So boy, anybody out there that gave up chocolate for Lent, just listen to what you gave up. Wow. Wow. Uh, um, you um, sure gave up a lot. Uh, oh wow. That sounds yummy. Mm, With some cheap mm, old coffee. Mmm, boy. You know what? Let me tell you what, Shannon. I am so happy that Jesus Christ suffered for my sins so that I don't have to. So that I can go to him for forgiveness. Yes. So that he could save my soul, so that he could deliver my soul. Mm. Amen. Um, thank you, thank you, Jesus, that, that I don't have to suffer for 40 days and beat myself. Right. And you know what? That's why we love Jesus, right? Amen. Because then we can, in, because I can enjoy this Kit Kat bar today mm. without any feelings of guilt. I can lift up honor and praise to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this Kit Kat bar that I just ate, Lord. I ask that you bless it and sanctify it to my body, Lord. I break up yes. any curses over it in Jesus' name, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. You know, and you know what? My wife and I, we, we continually, you know, hey, we pray over every meal because you know what? Yeah, there's been times where I haven't had that meal. And you know what? I really appreciate eating. So I really thank the Lord for that. And I pray over my food. Yes. So praise the Lord. Say amen so, to that. Praise the Lord for great. a good cup of Chibo coffee and a great chocolatey Kit Kat bar. Right. You know, yep. um, Shannon, go ahead. They even taste better if you stick them in the freezer for a while, and they're and oh. they're very cold. <laughs> uh, as a matter as a matter of fact, that's what I did. Kit, cold <laughs> Kit Kats. Oh, oh man. yeah, that's great. You know, nibble on a nibble on a cold Kit Kat while you're reading your Bible and watch watch your discernment explode. So <laughs> praise the Lord. Now, one more question. Uh, what is your Chibo? Is it black or do you have it peanut butter colored? Oh, my, my, the Kit Kat or Chibo? The Chibo coffee. Oh, no, no, no. I, I put some milk in. Oh, yeah. I pour milk in. Right. I pour milk, I pour milk in my coffee because German coffee tends to be a little bit stronger. It's what's improved my discernment by 37%. And so I pour milk in. And how much milk do I pour in until I can see the until I can see the storm clouds rise up from the bottom of my cup? Oh yes. So now that is a perfect right. cup of coffee right there. Mm. That's what I'm talking anyway, about. Anyway, it's really good. I'm sorry, uh, Shannon. Are, are you drinking coffee now? I know you are in, on a strict diet regimen. You know what? I uh, my diet includes uh, coffee, and uh, I'm I'm with you. With my okay. coffee here, I just forgot to bring the Kit Kat bar. <laughs> All right. Well, I should have. I should have let you know beforehand. I told my told my wife yesterday. I said uh, because I really don't you uh, you uh, yeah use candy bars. <laughs> Inject them into my arms. No, uh, I don't eat a lot of candy, but I really do enjoy Kit Kats and a uh, uh, Reese's peanut butter cups are also one of my favorites. Oh, yes. And there's also a candy bar they have over here in Germany called the Lion Bar, which is oh. really good. Uh, but for various and sundry reasons, I do not continually um, um, – I, uh, I, I, don't, uh, I, I don't eat a, eat a lot of candy. So praise the Lord. But I enjoy it, but I just don't let it have the dominion over me. <laughs> well, I'm just going to eat vicariously through you and that Kit Kat okay. bar. Um, well, we'll share. 
Yeah, and uh, Shannon, we'll get together later. I'll say I'm going to send you uh, if you're if you're drinking coffee here. If you if you're drinking coffee, then I'm going to send you. Uh, I might send you a little care package down to you. So send you wow. some really good coffee and see what you think about it. That sounds really good. Everybody, welcome aboard. We're tuning we're tuning in live today with Pastor Elvis Newhart coming to you from Hamburg, Germany, on Thursday, April 18th, 2019. Uh, bring your coffee out to these broadcasts. Come out and get uh, also fed a great meal of the Word of God and uh, invite a friend to come on out. Um, shall we say hello to anybody in the chat room today? Well, uh, well, in the chat room, I'd like to do – actually, I'd like to do a few shout-outs here for people here too. Uh, first thing I'd like to say is good morning uh, to my number one sheep uh, that's probably listening in right now as we speak. Um, I also want to send a greetings out to Elijah, Elijah in the grand state of Wisconsin, who enjoys the programs and uh, really enjoys the programs, has received a lot of them. And he wrote in uh, recently, uh, it's really good to have Elijah on your side in a spiritual fight. You know, I'm like, I, I'm ready to call some of the down. I'm really ready to call down some fire on the province of Baal. Let me tell you. Right. Um, also, uh, and uh, Shannon, our old friend Fisherman Pete just wrote me before the broadcast today. All right. And, and he wanted to send his love and his greetings to us. And also, he sent me a, a YouTube video that I'll check out later. Uh, but what they're going through is that they're going through uh, the exorcism of the, the deliverance of an ex high priestess. And it's a, a, you know, an ex high priestess that came to the Lord. Um, how I know this is kind of real is that they are they are step for step, bit by bit, they're, they are praying for this lady. Uh, a lot of her ex-friends are making things kind of difficult, but the lady is moving forward with her deliverance and getting free from that. And anybody that's been involved that much in witchcraft and everything, that takes quite a bit of deliverance. And so, but praise the Lord, that can happen too, folks. There are people who have been really involved in witchcraft that can... Uh, uh, you know, come to the Lord. There's just a lot of deliverance there. My only red flag ever is if, you know, they get they get saved on Friday and then Sunday they're in the pulpit preaching. It's like, wow, you know, where did you get your deliverance? You know, you know, tell us right. where did you get some of your deliverance? Thanks for all the knowledge of the, of the uh, demonic kingdom, but where did you get your deliverance on that one? So, praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, anyway, God bless, brother. So, well, Fisherman Pete and. Uh, who else we got out there? We got Grim Slayer, uh, Britain. Are you in Britain? James Van Halen, any kin to Wolfgang? We got Carlos Santiago. Uh, Carlos is a newlywed, brother Elvis. Oh, congratulations, Carlos! Freddie Diarte, welcome aboard today. Sister Allison Walmerons, tuning in from South Africa. Give us an update. How are things going over there? I know the uh, the president over there was not a happy camper a while back. I hope he settled down. Let's see here. Uh, who else we got out there? Fr Freddie Diarte, Felipa Q in London. God bless you, sister. Keep looking up 777 and see Tran. And others tuning in also on MixLR. Welcome aboard. Brother Elvis, back to you. Oh, praise the Lord. Yeah, welcome to everybody. I also want to say over the two years, like we said again, if you've just tuned in and you're listening to some of our Tom Tom foolery, uh, today is the second anniversary of me being here on the Omega Man Radio Network. Uh, two years ago, Shannon Davis took the big chance and he brought me on to see if I would be able to fill up a half an hour program for him. <laughs> well, but. We didn't. We <laughs> we got to, we got to the thirty minute mark, and he encouraged me to go on for an hour. And by the time we got to the end of that hour, he asked me if I would ever be interested on in coming back again. And I'm happy that I said yes. So and likewise, brother, Lord. it's an honor to team up with you. And um, we're just we're blessed to know Pastor Elvis. And uh, I'm excited about what God is going to do this year and beyond. And uh, Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, I apologize to everybody. We were off about 11 days, but everything has uh, been sorted out, and we're back. Um, I streamlined a few things, and um, I'm excited about to, what lays ahead. With that, Brother Elvis, back over to you. Okay, praise the Lord. Well, yes, and uh, really, thanks again, people, for listening. Thanks again for listening to the broadcast here, um, also in the archives. 
that have been set up. Uh, thanks for everybody that's went over and listened to the Elvis Newhart Network and become a subscriber over there. We really uh, thank you and appreciate you, and we really hope that these messages have been a blessing to you. And the training in deliverance and like the prayers that we have been doing, uh, a lot of the testimonies that I've received back, and that's what I really like about uh, the people that are listening in, is that they're not just hearers of the word, but they're also doers of the word. And, you know, they're not like a bunch of baby birds. You know, young Christians are like baby birds, and we have to drop the word the word or the worm in the mouth, right, and to help them along and, and, and whatever. But you know what? What's really great is when Christians, it's when they finally get it and they start to fly themselves. And, hey, even if it's just little baby steps, baby flaps, praise the Lord. You see them growing. You, you turn that over to the Holy Spirit, and you watch people just— um, you know, you watch people just start grow, uh, growing up in the Lord, and, and that's the thing, right? You know, I joke about my, my wave and my masses of subscribers, you know, and we talk about that. But really, at the end of the day is you're just blowing hot air through a microphone if you're not helping people, and if you're not helping people win the daily race, right? You can preach on Sunday, but the folks have to be able to use that Sunday night or Monday morning, uh, when they go when they go out and about, because you know, like the, you know, the devil doesn't take a vacation, and we know that. So praise the Lord, we'll do that. So anyway, so thanks again, Shannon, for uh, putting up with me, being patient with me. Thank. Uh, also, Shannon, thank you again for this uh, Thursday morning time slot that we have, and uh, uh, for this uh, Thursday morning time slot that we have, and the time that yes, you've sure. allotted. So let us use it wisely. Um, I do appreciate that. Uh, I'm going forward here. Now, what I want to do, and since we've been off for about 11 days, and it's been a while, been a while uh, since we, we spoke, I want to go back to the last message that we gave, and we're going to continue uh, talking, uh, talking about these topics that we've been on. And uh, the last message, if you want to go back in the archives later, was called uh, The Devil's Super Soldiers, Why the Devil Wants to Delete Your Soul. And there are many similarities here, and I want to really go through, uh, we're going to do a, a real, it's going to be like, the Germans love that word, blitz. So we're going to make a blitz through the Bible right now, and I want to just hit those Bible verses again, just do a little mini recap of the original message. Now, that's where I went through the soul, where we received our soul, right? Um, what our soul is for, right? And why, you know, why, why does God even want us to have a soul? Right. And also, you know, why the soul is so important and why the devil hates our soul. Now, so, folks, I'm going to go really quick here now just to this first part, but I'm going to hit the Bible verses. So you can either write the verses down or catch them again on, on one of the recordings. But in Genesis chapter two, verse seven, it says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, comma. You see, and like I say all the time, I say people usually read the Bible too fast. But so we have the first thing is where God formed man of the dust of the ground. So you can make a human body, right, You can, of the dust of the ground, right? But the next part was, it says, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now that's very important. And I want to run off and go into another direction here about, you know, the difference between a dead soul, a living soul, and a missing soul. But it says, you know, and God gave it, and, and he gave us a, he, he uh, breathed into us a living soul. And it says in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 29, but if from thence you shall seek the Lord thy God, you will find him if you seek him with all of your heart and with all of your soul. Now, Let's go back to this, too. What is the soul real quick? Basic definition, what's really going to help us as we go forward, the soul is the mind, the will, the emotions, and we're going to include in the heart, right? And actually, you're going to see they talk about the soul and the heart. But just for this, we're going to put them together because we're going to find out that there's there, the devil is waging a, a war on all of those. And why did God give us, give us a heart and why did he give us a soul, Right. Well, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, way at the beginning, and, and this, is why, this is why I'm going all the way back to the beginning. It was the original plan. And you shall love the Lord thy God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your might. Now, there's a purpose for it there, right? You can go to the last chapter in the book of Ecclesiastes, and you'll find the meaning of life. 
So you can go find that out. If you're, if you're searching for the meaning of life, go to, to the last chapter in the book of Ecclesiastes. But now this is what happens here, too, is that, um, you know, and Jesus said this was the first and the greatest commandment, right? And the next one was to love your neighbor as yourself. And so this is the thing. We're supposed to do that with all of our heart and with all of our soul. Well, what if 50% of that is missing? Are we able to do that, right, to do that? Okay. Now, uh, there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, let, let me keep going down here. Um, in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9, we were instructed, only take heed to yourself to keep your soul diligently. And in the German there, it, it says, wow, it, it really talks about you, you, need, to, you need to guard that. Right to keep it diligently, you need diligently. You need to be on guard for your soul. Right? What do you trade it for? What do you let in? What do you let out? Right? And it says, and why? Now, now notice this, and this is where this is where people miss this, but this is why it's taught. We need to really watch over our soul. Why? Lest thou forget the things which your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Now, look at this. We're dealing with, this gets in, we see the mind and we see the heart. We see the mind and the heart connection, by the way. And we see here, too, is like, you know, when that soul starts going, so does the memory. Okay? You know, when your mind is not there, remember we, our definition of the soul, you know, all of a sudden the memory's there and you just forget the things which your eyes have seen, right? Which your eyes have seen, which your heart has understood. And you know, because if you forget it, then it's just out of the way. And so we see here one of the devil's plans is, you know, have you ever done that? Have you ever really heard a good message? You know, you're in church or maybe you listen to a broadcast and you go, wow, that was a good, me- a great message. And five minutes later, you can't remember what it was about, right? Or the next day, you can't remember it, what, what it was about. And we've had this, too. We've had people that, you know, they were in church on Sunday, and then on Wednesday we would come back, and there would be testimonies, or people would be sharing, and they'd be sharing, and I would be sitting there going, we just covered all of this last Sunday. And so, yeah, so there's a war. They want to do this. Now, now look at this here. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7 tells us, it says, casting, uh, whoops, and of course it goes all the way down. It's a, a First Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, you know what, we cast all of our... Uh, we cast all of our cares on him, right, because he cares for us. It says, be sober, be vigilant, be vi- vigilant, wow, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, is walking around, seeing whom he may devour. Now, you know, you would think with this Bible verse here, and I've got to be careful not to preach this message now, but there's a lot of things that says, well, Christians can't have demons, and you don't need to do that, and they can't be inside of you. Well, you know, even if you believe that, look at this verse here. It says, you know, you have an adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion. He's walking around to see who, see who, see who he, he can devour, not just eat, devour. And by the way, lions and wild animals, they usually go for the insides and the liver first. So anyway, but it says worries and anxieties, right? That's going to, you know, there's a reason why they call it trauma-based mind control, right? And it's like, you know, all these traumas, all these fears, okay, that's going to that's gonna war against your soul, your soul too. We, uh, we went through a lot of verses in that other program about how the heart melts. So much is talking about... You know, in Psalm twenty-two, fourteen, it says, I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is, is like, like wax. It is melted in the middle of my bowels, right? And a lot of people feel that way. And notice the, the direct thing on the heart here where, where the heart is just melted. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the middle of my bowels. We explained that in, in the past message, right? So anyway... Let's get down to this here, too. Uh, Matthew 16, verse 26 came out. It says, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world? You're out there getting everything else, and you lose your own mind, you lose your will, you lose your emotions, and you lose your heart. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his mind, his will, his emotions, or his heart? And I tell you what, the devil has markets set up everywhere. Okay, there's times where the enemy comes and and something happens and and it do, it does it to us and we lose parts of our soul, but there's a lot of times where we exchange our soul willingly. And you go, yeah, big deal, big deal. 
It felt good while I did it. Well, the thing is, is that you lose part of your soul, and what you do is you pass on pretty much that soul, that soullessness onto the next generation. Mm-hmm. We talked about that. Now, look at this. Well, what could that possibly be where we exchange for our soul? Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Okay? And we ask, we ask, what did you trade your soul for today? Okay? And you've got fleshly lusts. Okay? Ah, let's go on. I, I've got to do a recap. I want to go back and re-preach re everything again. But it's in, it's in the first part of this message, right? We see in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 7, that, lust, that, that Lot, he was continually vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, the filthy manner of living by the wicked. You see, today that's called normal, people. Today that's called progressive. Today that's called hip. Today that's called, uh, that's called cool, right? But, you know, back here in Second Peter chapter 2, verse 7, it says, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. And so, and it says, his, and it vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their wicked deeds. Right? That's happening today, by the way, too. Okay. Now, in Psalm chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, more things on the soul. It said here in Psalm chapter 7, verse 1, it says, O Jehovah, my God, in thee do I take refuge. Save me from all them that pursue me and deliver me. And deliver me. How does God deliver us? We get deliverance. Salvation, healing, and deliverance. Save me from all them that pursue me and deliver me. Why? Verse 2, lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces while there is none to deliver. Thank you, Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, that are people out there interested in deliverance. Right? Lest he tear my soul like a lion. You see, look at this. And, and and go back to those other verses where we talk about the lion that's going out there waiting to see who he can devour. Here we see that the soul can be torn. Here we see that it could be rended. Look up the look at the definition of rending. We don't use that word a lot. Okay? Rending is like usually what happens to a cheeseburger when you're really starving, right? Or food, okay? Torn apart, lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces. Now, last verse here in our recap, it's Psalm chapter 23, verse 3. It says, he restoreth my soul, okay? He restoreth my soul. That's the big Psalm 23, 3. Right? He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, question here. He restoreth my soul. Why would, he, why, would, why would God need to restore our soul? Our mind, our will, our emotions, the heart. I could add stuff. Appetite, intellect. Right? He restoreth my soul. And so, praise the Lord. And so, what we see here is, is that uh, what goes on. Let me go. Let me switch over from that. What goes on here is that there is a restoration of the soul. In the German language of the Bible, it's, it says, he brings my soul back to life. Now, that's really good, but I do take issue with that because if the soul is missing or if the soul is captured somewhere, as, as we've talked about also in the last message, I'm really pushing message number one because if this is the first message you hear, I'm going to talk about stuff and you're going to say, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, well, we just spent two hours talking about that previously. Okay. But it says, you know, you can't, you know, great. He, uh, you know, he brings life back to my soul, but you know what? The soul can be missing. Uh, we also mentioned the message from Professor Tom Mack where he was talking all the way back about the golems. And we went through all the golems, like the golem of Prague, and uh, the, 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 the golem of Prague, which was actually a super soldier back then, used to, uh, used to torment the Holy Roman Empire, right? Hear the message. And how that, how that has progressively, you know, they didn't throw that technology away. And they didn't, they didn't throw that away. And that's going to bring us up to our next part, and that's where we're going to start today. Hmm. So... Praise the Lord. I hope I have this laid out right. 
I know, then that was the really recap that we went. We pray over our minds in Jesus' name. We lose, a, lose focus on that in Jesus' name. But what I'd like to do also here is I want to talk about something. And uh, last Sunday at church, I was showing the people here too um, where you could really see this visually. A visual represent, representation of this is uh, if you go to YouTube, don't go there now. Stay right here on the thing. But a- after the program, you can go to YouTube and t- just type in the words Born Legacy. There were uh, three Jason Bourne movies with Matt Damon. Uh, there was another one with Jeremy Renner. But it's, just type in the words Born Legacy. And right at the top of your screen, there's going to be a little three-minute uh, three clip called We're Done Talking. And I want you to remember what we talked about, about the, uh, the characteristics of these people, and especially these men, these quote-unquote super soldiers or spies, right, that have had their souls uh, removed, right? And remember, the qual- one of the qualities was they didn't talk, and they didn't talk much. And so what we have here in that little clip right there on YouTube that we're talking about right now Again, go to YouTube, just type in Born Legacy, and usually at the top should show up, uh, we're done talking. And actually, the first 20 minutes of the movie is really good because that is where they're showing you everything that's going on in the hopes that you will just laugh and say, ha that's just a movie. Okay? Now, what happened was, was there, there's a meeting here of two super soldiers, and soldier number one, uh, he went off the grid for four days. He missed the check-in with his controllers, and he has been off his physical and mental enhancing medications, right? He just went off the grid, right? And so now he's in the middle of Alaska going through this training range and everything, going through this training range. He has to cross over a mountain, and he has a pack of wolves chasing him this whole time for this initial 20 minutes. Now, they talk about that right at the beginning of the clip. They're, he's wondering, he, he goes, why are these wolves still hunting me? He says, wolves don't do that to humans. And super soldier number two said, well, maybe they think that you're not human. Mm Mm-hmm. You think animals could pick that up that you don't have, you know, that people are missing their soul? And really, it's like that thing. It's like, well, you're not a human, so we're just going to tear you apart anyway. So they they keep going on. And super soldier number one, played by Jeremy Renner, he's the guy with the beard when you go watch. Okay, he wants to talk and he wants to get to know the other guy and, you know, teamship and camaraderie. And he's like, well, hey, how many of them are there? How many, uh, how many of us, um, how many, uh, how many, you know, how many people are there of us, right? How many, how many are there? And, and the other guy didn't answer, right? And you see, you see the withdrawing of information. And what they do is they keep these guys separate. They do not let them get together. And so uh, Super Soldier Number One, he keeps asking questions. Say, hey, how, how are you? What's going on? And then finally, Super Soldier Number Two says, he just finally says, you talk too much. You think too much. Okay. And you see, they're not programmed to do that. You know, they've got all this training. And actually, they really try to remove as much of the soul as possible. Right. And they break that down, you know, just like the military, the higher you go up in different skill skill branches of the military, the more and more they break they break you down so that you just rely on your training. If you go watch these Navy SEAL videos, you'll find out they'll say, well, when the bullets start flying, you know, everything else about you kind of goes away and you rely on your training. And I tell you what, these people are so trained. Right. It's just an automatic reaction. But you see, they're not programmed to, to be around people. I'm talking about these super soldiers again. So, so what happens is super soldier number one asked, uh, you know, he, he told all his story. And so super soldier number one just asked him, he says, well, why are you here? And soldier number two doesn't say. He doesn't answer. So soldier number one, super soldier number one starts guessing, Right. He just starts going down a list because, you see, they're trained in this here, too. You know, that's the thing on psychology, too. They just start bombing you. They just start asking you questions or putting things out there to see what you react to. And you're like, oh, that's for super soldiers. No, they train sales and marketing people to do this, too, to you, to see where you um, to see where you um, see where you react. You see, people, you're under some of this, too, right? And so, super, so soldier number one starts guessing. He goes down the list. And do you know what number two super soldier's sin was? 
with all that programming he had, with all that training that he had, with all the vaccines and the chemicals that they pumped into the in, uh, in, in, into their guys in, into their guys, you see, they had to keep taking this to you know keep their physical abilities, keep their enhancement. They always had to. They always had to. Um, um, uh, they they always had to check in with their controllers, right? Okay. There was still enough soul inside of soldier number two to fall in love. He fell in love with somebody, and that's why they took him out of the rotation, and they put him in isolation. Because you see, falling in love, that's a big no-no. Because when you, start getting your, when you start getting your soul back, you develop an ability to give love and to receive love. And love starts, love starts to grow. Right. And that is a no, no, because when the soul starts to come back, the controllers freak out. And you will see this in all three of the Jason Bourne movies. You'll see this in the Bourne legacy, um, in the Bourne legacy. Right. They are afraid you'll find out or you'll wake up to what they're doing to you. Right. OK. And when that happens, they're afraid that the super soldiers will come back and kill them. Stay tuned for the movie. No spoiler alerts, but you might want to check that out. You see, one of their biggest fears is is that the soul when, when the super soldiers start getting their mind back, their will back, their emotions back, when they get their heart back. Okay, that's why it was so important for centuries, and as they, they keep trying to refine this, right? By the way, uh, in, the pro- in the program that Professor Tom Mack shared, he talked about the Marhalal or the Kabbalah, the Kabbalah rabbi who created this, who created the Gollum soldier and everything, and, it was, and how they did that. Well, in the Bourne legacy, you see the modern-day Mahalals, right? You see the modern-day people, the scientists that are creating and controlling these people. And the thing is, is that when too much soul comes back, they have to take you out of commission because you're a machine. They slip you a drug and they kill you somehow. If they really need to, what they do is they send another super soldier or an upgraded one to come and get them. So notice, notice how satanic and notice how demonic this is because we see the same thing happening with Christians too. When you start going forward in deliverance and you start getting your mind back and your will back and your emotions back and you get your heart back, you know, one thing about deliverance, one, uh, one thing about uh, deliverance is, you know, people start getting their mind back, okay, and all of a sudden the brain becomes hu- hungry. And have you had those times you just want to read, read, read? How many testimonies have we heard from people, right, where – you know, they get saved, they start getting some deliverance, and they're like, oh, I just read in the Bible. I just read in the Bible, eating the Bible, right? Okay? And really reading the Bible and everything, right? Okay? And so, anyway, so what happens is, is your mind starts to come back, and you, and, and you want to read the Bible, and you grow, and your emotions and your heart comes back, Right? And, you know, and the enemy's really not going to want that to happen. That's why you have the, the backlash. We were talking about Fisherman Pete at the beginning of the program. We're talking about Fisherman Pete at the beginning of the program where they're praying for an, uh, this, this, uh, this ex-high priestess down there, right? And what they're doing is they're praying and the lady's coming back and witchcraft does not want to let you go. And by the way, there are a lot of bills to be paid. When you've been playing with the devil's, devil's power, the devil comes back to collect a bill. And so they've been praying, and, they, and you know, everything's been coming against him here, too, because you know, they don't want to lose that. So let's keep going, right? So here's what happened. So here's what happens here. The soul comes back, starts coming back to these guys. You know, the soldier number one, he wants to have connection and talk to people, right? And number two... He fell in love. He fell in love with a woman. So they took him away. And the end effect is, is what they did is they put these guys way up, way up in a mountain in an isolated cabin. They probably would have put him in a cave, right, if they could have, right? They put them in an isolated cabin. They got both of these super soldiers together, and then they bombed them with a drone strike to kill them. Okay. 
because they cannot lose control. You know, you watch that or you think that, folks, you look at that, and you got to remember basically what they're what they're showing there or what they're darstellen, that's the German word, what they're presenting there on film is exactly what the enemy is doing to you. Okay? Praise the Lord. Now, so like we said, the beginning of the beginning of the broadcast today, we went through a whole bunch of scriptures. I'd invite you to go back and and listen to program number one, where we talked on that with the deletion of the soul. And you're like, oh, where's the Bible? Where's the Bible? Have you you error not knowing the scriptures, right? Well, I want to talk about another another man, and that is curiously uh, similar to all of everything that I've been talking about right, uh, right now. And if you go to Mark chapter 5, I'd like to share a story with you. You see, what happened was, was that Jesus loaded up the guys and he took a trip, boat trip to Greece. He did. In, in Mark chapter 5, verse 1, and they came over to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. So you'll want to look at that there too. Jesus went over to that, and actually Jesus is now entering Greece. Uh, entering Greece now is an area called Decapolis. You can look that up, Decapolis. And so, and when he, and when Jesus was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Okay, right when Jesus gets off the landing craft, right? A man with an unclean spirit. Now, this man, notice this, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Okay, he's living in the gra graveyard, and nobody could bind him. So we're seeing the super strength. Now, verse 4, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been uh, torn, the chains had been broken by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man stop him. No one could put him down. Are we seeing something here? Now notice this, and it's also way up in the tombs, right? Okay, up in the tombs by himself. And now notice this, verse 5, And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Do we notice something here, folks? We see the isolation here. We see the anger. We see the violence, right? And you know what? There were people always trying to probably go up there and get him, right? They were probably making videos of him on, on their iPhones saying, Hey, we've got a Bigfoot sighting picture here, Right? And now notice the condition of this poor man. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with, to uh, with stones. That's a lot of torment. You know, people are always like, well, does the Bible say anything about people cutting themselves? Yes, it does. And there it is. But do you notice here, this man was dealing with a lot of his mind, his will, his emotion, and his heart. We're going to show that today, Okay. And people, where we've been talking here, a lot of this is going to apply to you, right? And so what happens is, is we see him in a real bad, real bad condition. Now notice this, verse 6. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, bowed down to him. There was still enough left inside of him that when he saw Jesus a long ways away, that's what that means. It was, it was a long ways away, right? He ran and he worshipped him. There was still something, you know, somebody, uh, there was a, somebody wrote me and asked a question. It, you know, well, can the soul be 100% deleted? I do not think it can be 100% deleted. I think they try to do their best. Right. It's almost like almost in some cases, it's like def uh, deleting a file on your computer. When you delete a file on your computer, the file is still there. It's just the beginning of it. There's a mark at the beginning of it saying this space is available to be overwritten. OK, so, yes, a lot of it can be, you know, a lot of the soul can be basically take, taken away. Like we talked about through abuse, trauma based mind control, through addictions. We could go down the whole list again, but I want to keep, keep speaking here, right? Okay, we went, we went down a whole list of things that remove the soul. We fleshly lust for people, right? That's a willing one.
Okay, but see the th- the 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 point is, is that a lot of it can be removed. And boy, you know how it, how would it be if half your mind is, is is you know half your mind is gone, or your emotions are gone, or your will is gone, or your heart. Okay, and filled in with something else. Remember, we talked about the first message that you know, enemy like that. You know, unload the soul with from the old program and load your new program in there. Okay, so here we go. But now look at this. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and he worshipped him. Right. So this guy got really close to Jesus, and look what happened. Verse seven. And he cried with a loud voice and said, "What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God?" Right? I command you by God that you torment me not. Did you hear the demons trying to command Jesus? I command you by God that you do not that you do not torment me. Now why did he say this? Right? Why did the you know the man came, he worshiped Jesus. Now why did he say this? Verse eight, for he had said unto him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Oh, so we see this tormented man with he, a lot of his soul was missing, but look at there was an unclean spirit here. Verse nine, and he asked him, "What is your name?" And he answered and saying, "My name is Legion, for we are many." So now look, it was not just one demon; it was many. And if you want to go by the definition of a legion, a legion is usually five to six thousand. Right, five to six thousand. Why does deliverance take so long? Yeah, five to six thousand. And verse ten, and the demons, they begged Jesus much that he would not send them away out of the country. Interesting. They didn't want to leave the country. Maybe they were country western demons. Hmm. Anyway, uh, you know, don't send us out of the country. This is interesting because. Where they're at right now is a place, is in a city, in an area called Decapolis, which was a Greek portion on the, on the, on the Romans' eastern frontier. Look it up. Anyway, don't send us away. Right. Anyway, okay. I like that, though. Country Western demons. Look out. Verse 11. Oh, the whole pig story. Boy, let's get down to that. If I if I tell the whole pig story here, then people aren't going to eat bacon anymore. Now there was there was nigh into the mount, uh, 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 there was close to the mountains a big herd of pigs that were feeding. Verse twelve, and all the devils besought him, saying, "Send us into the swine that we may enter into them." Right now, for a very foolish reason, some people point back to this and say, "See, this is why you shouldn't eat pork." Oh, my lord. Oh, my Lord, this is not an anti-bacon commercial here, right? If it would have been a large herd of bunny rabbits, the demons would have said, cast us into the bunny rabbits. Okay? They don't care. Oh, by the way, that answers your question, too, if animals can, if animals can have demons. Yes, they can. Also, on the last program, we mentioned the movie called The Ghost in the Darkness. Many people respond, uh, wrote back and said they, they really um, – they really uh, – um, enjoyed that, right? So continue to enjoy your bacon, guilt-free. However, pray over your food. Pray over your food in Jesus' name. Now, there was the pigs, and they said, well, let us go into the pigs, you know, because there weren't any people around, right? Right, and you know what? And forthwith, right? and, and Jesus said instantly, he gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000. Can you imagine that? A herd of 2,000 pigs? Wow. Okay? And they were drowned in the sea. Okay? And they were drowned in the sea. So there's the thing, too. Now, one thing here, too, I want to notice out, and, all, and also in deliverance, when you're praying for people and there's all these things, where do we send the demons? Where do we where do we um, uh, where do we send the demons, folks? You know what? You can always pray. You know, you can you can just keep it real simple. You cast them out and just say, "Demon, you go where Jesus tells you to go." Right? You go where Jesus tells you to go in Jesus' mighty name. Because what will happen is the demons sometimes will try to play this game again, and they'll say, "Oh no, don't don't. We're not we we're not going to come out of this person. Can you just cast us somewhere else? No, you go where Jesus tells you to go." No, I'm not sending you into the man's mother-in-law. No, that no, I no, 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 we're not doing it. No, I am not sending you demons into Shamu, the killer whale. No, we're not doing that. By the way, demons, this is not request hour. 
you go where Jesus tells you to go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to put that out there. Now, watch what happens here, folks. Notice we've had this man. In the Gospels, they talk, in, in some of the other Gospels, they, uh, one of them, I think Matthew, they talk about two men. Let's not stumble over that, right? And so, notice the demons, these, this legion of demons left the gathering demoniac, went into the 2,000 pigs. They were drowned. And verse 14, and they that fed the swine ran away. Okay? Can you imagine that? You have to take care of 2,000 pigs. And suddenly, the little piggy, right? The little piggy gets possessed. <laughs> this little piggy ate roast beef. This little piggy had none. <laughs> You have 2,000 manifesting pigs. And folks, if you, if you have been around, I mean, hogs, I mean, hogs are big and hogs are thick. And you get them moving, you, you got to get out of their way. It's not these cute little porky pigs that you see, people. These were big old hogs, right? And they that took care of the pigs, the pigs, they fled. And they told it in the city and in the country. Notice that. They told it in the city. First they went in and told the town. And then it went out to all the other all the other places in the country, right? And they went out to see what it was that was done. What happened? Who is this guy that shows up and suddenly uh, 2,000 pigs just jump off a cliff? Now, what happened was in verse 14 when they heard about this, uh, I'm sorry, in verse 15, and they come to Jesus and they see him that was possessed with the devil. Now, everybody knew this guy, remember? Nobody, no man could tame him. He had a reputation, right? And see him that was possessed with the devil, and he, he had the legion. And what, what happened? He was sitting, and he was clothed, and in his right mind. Okay, so now look at this. His soul came back, right? He was sitting. He was calm. He wasn't raging. You know, usually in the past, when these guys would walk up the mountain and see this guy, bad things would start to happen. Right. The second thing was, was notice he was clothed here. They noticed that they're like, wow, he has clothes on. And if you look at many other parts in the Bible here, too, there's a direct connection between nakedness and insanity. That'd be another good message. You know, all these people that want around, want to run around naked all the time. Uh, like the lady that was in Colorado here, the one that uh, they shut down all the schools because this lady came. Well, they, you know, they shut down all the schools. She came from Florida and they found her, sadly. Uh, she bought a shotgun and she was running naked through the woods in the mountains. And they found her and she shot herself with the shotgun. Okay. Just happened in the news. It, the, re the only reason why I bring that up is you see a thing here too. And how many people, you know, you hear about on the airplanes where people just start freaking out and they start stripping off all their clothes on an airplane. Okay. Anyway, but notice he was sitting and he was clothed and now notice this and he was in his right mind. He was in his right mind and look what happened. And they were afraid. Now, remember the story I just talked about, Born Legacy here? These guys start coming back to themselves. They're acting like normal men. They're talking. They want to make connection. The other guy, you know, the, the other guy falls in love, and what happened? The first thing they did with those guys is they sent a drone with a missile on it to blow them up, to kill them. But now notice this here. Well, wouldn't you be kind of happy? And they were afraid. I mean, this guy that was crying, this guy that was going around beating people up, breaking off chains, nobody could, nobody could buy him. Nobody could put him down. And now he's calm and sitting and clothed. And look at the first thing with them. And they were afraid. You know, you'd figure that they'd be kind of interested going like, wow. I mean, we got that pig thing going on, but, but crazy man. Naked crazy man, naked crazy gorilla up there. He calmed him down. Verse 16, and they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the pigs, right? And so notice they said that they said, well, this Jesus guy came and he talked to him. He talked to the crazy naked gorilla guy. And you know what? All of a sudden, all of a sudden, the next thing we saw is 2,000 of our, of our hogs, a hog, not a little piggy, a hog, right? 2,000 
went and ran off a cliff and drowned themselves in the ocean. And verse 17, now notice their reaction. And they began, and they began to ask him to depart out of their coast. Uh, could you get out of our country, please? Maybe they were a little bit jilted about the pigs, but you'd figure that there would be somebody else that would be interested. And they began to pray him. They began to ask him to part to depart out of their coast. Now, people, why I bring that up? And let's let's pause right here. Because, folks, this is what happens sometimes. A lot of times when people get saved and when people start moving forward in the Lord and really when people start moving forward in deliverance, okay, this thing happens. And all of a sudden there's a change. Have you ever done that? You know, like if you were a real talkative person in the past and then it's like a calmness comes over here, you and you're around people and you're calm and you're just listening to people. Do you ever notice how, how unsettling and how afraid that makes some people, how nervous that makes some people? And they come over to you and they say, well, Bob, are you okay? Right? B- Bob, are you okay? Right? Is there something wrong with you? Right? Is there something wrong with you? Right? It's like, no, I'm just here just listening to everybody, just listening in. I'm fine. Why are you getting nervous? Right? And if you go over to – and in the New Testament, we have that place in Peter where he tells us too. He says, you know what? You're going to get saved. You're going to get, you get your deliverance. Uh, you're going to stop doing all those things that you did in the past. And I live this one, right? You're going you're gonna to do all – you're going to quit doing those things you did in the past. You're going to try to live a godly life. You're not going to go out drinking Wednesday night, Friday night, Saturday night, whatever. You're not going to end up at the watering hole. You're, you're going to leave off ch- childish things, right? And then, and I had that too. And people will come up with, are you okay? Are you fine? I remember the first time too, and when I was getting uh, de- uh, deliverance from drinking and, uh, and uh, drinking and being around and being around people that uh, tied in a lot to my rejection spirits back then, which also took me six years to go through. And the thing was, is when I finally took a stand and I, I learned more through deliverance teaching and I realized that that really shouldn't be part of my life, I said, OK, well, I'll stop that. Well, the next thing is, is I go back, I, I leave a workshop, I go back to Colorado, uh, I'm working away, young guy, and then it came for the whole work crew to go out and drink and have some beers. And I said, no, thank you. And that shocked people. I just said, no, thank you. And a good friend of mine came up and said, well, Elvis, if you're a little tight, if you're, if you're a little short on money, that's okay. That's okay. I'm, I'm going to buy for you. Guys, no problem. Drinks are on me tonight. Beer's on me tonight. Come on down. Right? And I said, I said, I said no, it, it's not that. Just no thanks. I just, I just don't do that anymore. And the look I got, you, you really, because you're not going to go down and drink. All of a sudden, they think that you have a mental illness problem when you're the one getting your brain back from alcohol. Right? Well, it just it just so happens that when I moved out to California to be closer to deliverance, I'm working in downtown Los Angeles. And as it was usual custom on Friday night, the the whole crew and that I, I worked in one of those skyscrapers down there, the the whole crew would want, run down to one of the local watering holes in Los Angeles. Now, mind you, we were putting in 12-hour days, sometimes 15-hour days down there. And by t- by the time it got to Friday, I was tired and I just wanted to go home and I had to fight the 101. Ever driven on the 101 or the 405? All you out there in California, shout out, right? Okay, right? When, when it's like blocked on a Friday, Friday afternoon traffic jam, I just wanted to get home. I was so tired. And I here were my words. I said, I, I said, I said, no, thank you. I just said, no, thanks. I said, I'm tired. I want to go home. Okay. I'm tired. I want to go home. I come back, and, and the next thing you know, on Monday morning, I had become a Mormon. At least that was the rumors and the gossip and the talk going, going around the entire company. You see, they said, well, we invited Elvis to come down and, and be with us here, you know. We, we invited Elvis to come down and be with us, but he said, no, thank you. Ah, he must be a Mormon. That's no joke. Okay. <laughs> You know, and I was so comforted when I found eventually found that Bible verse in Peter. It says, you know what? They're going to think it's strange. I should actually look that up really quick here, but I want to go for it. But you said, you know what? They're going to think it's strange when you're not doing those things anymore. Give me half a moment, folks. I want to share that verse with you. I'm going to look it up here. 
with a Bible app. I wonder if I should do a commercial for them. Anyway, let's see. Strange. I really want to share this here, too, because it's important because people go through this. Good people go through this. And I had to go through this, so I want to offer encouragement. Let me see here. Uh, here you go. First Peter 4.4. 4. How could I forget that? I should have this one, right? It says, wherein... Oh, here you go. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just start reading 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1, but we're going to start in, in verse 3 and verse 4. It says, For the time past of our life, may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Okay, I didn't hit everything in that list, folks, but there's a few things in that list that I was taking part of, okay? Right? You know, I went down that list and I go, okay, I got, I got a couple there. Yep, you're right, Lord, but look at the excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, Right? Okay, and you know what? Whatever. Abominable idolatries, lasciviousness. Lasciviousness means desire of the forbidden. Okay? And verse and then when you quit that, when you start getting your mind back, when the demons start going out and when your soul starts coming back in, wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot speaking evil of you. That happened to me, folks. I got blackballed on that. Here's a really funny thing, though, how God turns things around. You know, they're like, oh, he's a Mormon and everything. And really, I, it really kind of, yeah, it was kind of like a black mark against me. But what happened was, was um, all of the, all of like the executive vice presidents, all the senior marketing managers, all the real big wigs in this company in downtown Los Angeles, I worked in those skyscrapers, folks, they were all Mormon. And they heard that they had a little brother down in my department. And I'm sure the rumors went around and they heard the rumors too because rumors always because words have wings. And they found out that one of their little Mormon brothers was being persecuted. So it's really kind of interesting. You know like when David went to the king of the Philistines or whatever, you know? <laughs> you know, and 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 the Philistines actually saved they they covered for David or whatever. You know what? I was Golden Grams in the world of the Mormons at that company. And they opened many doors for me, and they helped me out. When they heard that I was coming to Germany, they were all excited because they go, "Oh, brother, brother Newhart, uh, we hear that you're going. We hear that you're going to go do your service, go do your missionary trip o- over in uh, uh, over in Germany." This is no joke, and this is a hundred percent true. And I'm sitting there, and, and and he goes, "Well, what temple do you go to?" And I said, "Well, I go to the West Coast Church of Deliverance." There was a blank look on his face because there's no Mormon temple named the West Coast Church of Deliverance, as far as I know still, (laughs) right? Okay, right. And I said, well, I go to a deliverance church, and his face just fell. And I think he finally realized it. But you know what? You see how God did that? When the enemy tried coming in and putting a black mark on me, it's like, oh, you're a Mormon, and people at work avoid you, and you you don't get invited to places. Okay, Just like out of 1 Peter 4, 4. Yeah, they, they, they spoke evil of me, right? They thought I was a square and everything else like that, right? But it was really funny. It's like God comes around and beats the devil with his own stick. And I had the whole upper crust of management helping out a brother, helping out a brother in that department. And nobody asked him, and nobody ever asked me where I went to church. That was the whole thing. I was wondering, I was like, geez, I got a bunch of Mormon buddies here at work right now. I might as well go with it, right? I mean, they were good people. They were great people. We did a lot of good work together. But anyway, that's a story. That's hilarious. And then they found out on the last day that I wasn't Mormon. I was a Christian who believed in deliverance. Praise the Lord. But so I want to tell you that here too. Now, And you notice this here too. Here's the gathering demoniac. Okay, well, he's not that way anymore. He got deliverance. I'll put, I'm going to make this real simple. He got deliverance. He received deliverance. Okay. He received deliverance. The, the, fi- the legion of demons went out, and there he is. He's clothed and sitting in his ri- and in his right mind. Interesting. Anyway, so praise the Lord. He was that, and they were afraid. 
You know, it's always something here too. Have you ever, have you ever been walking down the street, and you just see people looking at you sometime? And I mean, not just a look, look, but I mean like they're, you know, they've got a demon looking through them at you. And you know, it's because what's in what's in the people in the outside world? Okay, their demons see what's on the inside of you, right? And that goes both ways. They're either going to come down and say, hey. They're either going to – I don't want to use the word worship. That's not right. Don't worship me. Worship Jesus. Um, but they're going to come, and they're really going to want to be around you saying, hey, can I get free, right? And so praise the Lord. And the thing is, is that, um, you know, you, you catch them. It's, it's, number one, it's because they don't have a demonic filter trying to block things. This is why sometimes you'll, you'll have witches, and they'll know exactly. They're not going to need to see that fish bumper sticker on the back of your car to know that you're a Christian. Okay, This is why we pray and everything. Okay, But it's what it does to people. For some people, it's going to be a blessing. Have you ever noticed that, where some people just want to come up and talk to you, and it's just like refreshing, and it's nice, and wow. And, and there's even people I've talked to before. I'll be in stores, or I'll be at places. And there'll be people, and they'll be super, they'll be really nice. And I'll, I'll look at them, and I'll say, I'll go, hey, are, are, you, are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? And if they say yes, well, then we celebrate and rejoice. And I, and I could tell. I could just tell by your spirit. You, you're bright, and you're lively. I could just tell. Praise the Lord. God bless you. If I don't see you again, we're going to see you in heaven. We'll share a piece of fruit up there or something, right? Okay. But then, you know, but then there's times where, oh, what I want to say here, too, it, oh, and then if if they say no, they're not a correct Christian. I really say I say you know what, with a personality like yours, you really should be. Try that with your witnessing. If you're witnessing to somebody and say, hey, are you a Christian? And they go, well, no. We're just telling. Them. They say, well, you know what, you really should be. You should be. You, you know, with the way you are, you really should be. Okay, praise the Lord. Now I want to show you something else here too. So we see that his mind came back, his will came back. How do we know his will came back? Because he put clothes on. Okay? There are some people who are so mentally, emotionally beat down that they can't even get dressed in the morning. And that's a, the that's a truth. Okay, And he was in his right mind. Now let's go. And we see this here. Now let's look at the effect it had on his heart here since we're talking about the soul people. Verse 18. And, and when Jesus was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Can you imagine that, folks? You get deliverance. You get the deliverance. Okay? And all of a sudden, your heart comes back, and you know what? You just want to be close to Jesus. Jesus, take me with you. Right? And Jesus and the crew, they had to get back on their landing craft. They had to get back on their ship, go back over to uh, Judea, the Roman province of Palestina. Ooh, don't get me started. Okay? They had to go back, and this man said, you know what, man, I, I love this Jesus. Jesus set me free. I just want to be around him all the time. Notice how his heart was back. His heart was back. Let me come with you. Because now look at what had happened to this guy up until this point. He was in caves. They tried to put chains on him. They tried to beat the bejesus out of him. It didn't look like he had a lot of friends, right? It didn't look like he had a lot of friends. Okay, and now here comes Jesus, and he's like, you know what? I, I'm going with you, you, Jesus. Forget this, forget this Decapolis area. Forget that. I'm with you, Jesus. Take me with you, Jesus. And now look at this, verse 19. How be it? What a word. How be it? Jesus would not let him. Well, what would Jesus do? Is that the love of Jesus? Jesus would not let him get on the boat. Okay, but he said unto him, Go home to your friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for you and had compassion on you. Okay? Oh, my Lord. I had to go back. I've got to go back to all the, go home to my friends. Well, I, you haven't seen, I was living in the, I was living in the graveyard, Jesus. Right? I was living in the graveyard, Jesus. I was up in the mountains in the caves. I was running naked through the mountains. Where do you think my home is? These people tried putting me in chains, tried putting me in bondage, 
right? And now, right? And now, you want me to go home to my friends and tell them about what he did. Now, what do you think his testimony would be? Jesus told him to go back to his home, go back to his city, and people would see him. You see, they would remember how he was in the past, but they would see, that, like, wow, he's sitting, he's clothed, he's in his right mind. He came back. He isn't the crazy guy in the caves anymore. What happened to you? What, what happened to you? Right? What happened to you? And see, that's the testimony. There's a lot of times, folks, as you, as you get delivered and you get real deliverance, What's going to happen is, is other people are going to notice the change in you before you do. That was tough. That, that was. They're going to notice the change in you before you do. Okay? And you're going to go forward and you're like, oh, why isn't God working in my life? And then one of your friends or somebody's going to come up and go, wow, you're really different on this one. You've really grown in this area. Right? Just go forward. Right? Right? Okay, and see, that is what the testimony was going to be. And Jesus was like, and you know what? When people come up and say, Freddie Duarte, I remember you, man. You were, you, you were banging out there in the hood. You were banging in the hood. What happened to you, Freddie? What you doing, what you doing with your time, ma'am? What you doing with your time? What happened to you? You're looking good. You got a haircut. You got some videos up on YouTube. You're playing some golf. You're going to interesting places. What's going on? What happened to you, Freddie? And then that's where the door, that's where the door opens up and says, you know what? Let me tell you what's on. Yeah, I did that. I did. You saw me, ma'am. You know when I was in the barrio, up in the caves, chains on, nobody could put me down. My mom and my family, my grandma praying for me in the background, right? You saw what happened to me. That's how I was. But you know what, man? Let me tell you what Jesus did in my life. And I am so much more happier now. And I am so much more happier now. I'm getting my mind back, my will back, my emotions back. You know, I had chains on me. You know, the demons had put the chains of alcohol on me, trying to take my brain away. Right? But you know what? Jesus is setting me free day by day, hour by hour. Yeah, we sing that song, day by day, hour by hour, I am led by the Spirit's power. We also sing a song called Broken Pieces. Pick up the broken pieces and take them to the Lord. Pick up the broken pieces he has given his holy word. Christ will, take, Christ will put them all together and make your life complete. Just place the broken pieces at the Savior's feet. You know what? Let's do it right now. Are you ready? All out there. Here's a question now for those that are going back and forth. Let's focus now. Come back to it. You want your minds back? Your will back? Your emotions? Your heart? Last, last time we were together, that was something. The Lord just spoke in the middle of the broadcast. He goes, start praying for the broken hearts. And he showed me that. Go back. I started crying. I mean, I could feel the love of Jesus for the people out there with broken souls. Seriously. And you know what? You can buy all the tapes, all the books. You can do all the religious dancing, prancing, whatever you want to do. You can talk the talk, but it amounts to nothing if you're not getting your soul back. Right? So, Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, we pray right now. Father, we ask you for our mind back, for our will back, for our emotions back, for our heart back, Lord. Father, we, we pick up all the broken pieces of our mind in Jesus' name, the broken pieces of our will, our broken emotions. Did you ever think of that, those of you struggling with, the, uh, w with deliverance? I mean, struggling with depression, excuse me, sorry. You're struggling with depression, you know, there's a lot of pieces to come back. And I find it very interesting that anxiety and depression run hand in hand together so many times. So, Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, Lord, I also bring you all the broken pieces of my heart through my life, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. And I ask, we bring you the broken pieces, and we ask you, in Jesus' name, to put them back together in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, what happened with this guy? Verse 20. Can you imagine that? He just wanted to be with Jesus. Oh, 
I know that feeling. It'd be like, oh, Lord, take me with you, Lord. I'm going to be your best disciple. You see how big I am. You see how strong I am. Man, Jesus, we'll go into the roughest neighborhood and nobody is going to mess with us. Nobody's going to mess with us. I got, I got experience. I got skills. All right? And Jesus says, no, 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 no. You can't get on the boat. You see, Jesus was planting a missionary in Greece. It was Greece, people. Decapolis was a part of Greece. He went across the lake. It's a whole thing, you know, and, and, and the whole thing. They were raising pigs. They were probably obviously not Jewish, right? Okay? And Jesus says, no. And I want you to notice this here, too. Here is a crazy naked guy running through the mountains. Put that picture in your head, right? And that's the one who Jesus sailed across, sailed across the sea, they say, they, that, that Jesus sailed over there, sailed across the lake. And is, is it anything that Jesus said, you know what, give me your worst one. You know, Jesus picked the worst one when he picked Paul. Paul was one of the Pharisees' super soldiers that they sent out to go kill Christians, so Jesus took, Jesus took him. Then Jesus sails across the sea, and he picks the gathering demoniac, Interesting who God chooses. And did this guy have a testimony afterwards? Absolutely. Verse 20. And the gathering, well, the gathering, this guy, and he departed and he began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him and all men did marvel. He had a testimony and he was able to do that. Now notice, he got so much of his will back he was also able to do what Jesus told him to do. Are you having problems with that? Well, I know Jesus says that. I know the Bible says that, but I just have such a hard time obeying that. Well, let's call back the will in Jesus' name. Okay? Let's call back the will in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So, praise the Lord. Yes, and it's really important to get your mind back because... It's hard to speak with somebody or hard to try to convince with somebody who has either a scrambled mind or the mind is just not there. You know, I knocked on the door and no one home. Right. Praise the Lord. Um, we've had a lot of good testimonies on this here, too, about calling the soul back. Um, I want to share some stuff, too, that we've been going through. See, we're actually doing this here. I am doing this here. I am call calling my soul back, Okay. But one good thing, let's give some examples here. When we're talking about emotions, are there, is there anger that comes up? Are you easily anger? Well, you can bind that. You can bind that in Jesus' name, bind the anger. But you know what? Call your soul, soul back from that. Well, this makes me angry. Well, you know what? Well, we call your soul from that back in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Call your soul out of these emotions. Call it out of anger. Call it out of depression. Right? Call it out of sadness. Okay, if there's something going on there, okay, right, call your soul out of that. Oh, man, I, I, I watch this stuff and it really messes with my mind. Do you really want your mind being messed with? Right, call your mind back out of things. This is where calling your soul back. We were to, we, hey, we talk about fleshly lusts. You know, some of you know the series called The Devil and Karen Kingston, folks. Okay, you know that series? Now look what happened to her after she, after she saw her mother kill her father. And all those hedges were down. Right? And she got deliverance. And it still took three to four years to come back to quote-unquote normal. Right? To come back to normal. Okay? Right, and that's after a lot of deliverance there. Now, so here's another thing too. You know, are there, are, you know, do you have a broken heart? You know, call your soul back from that. Call your soul back from, from toxic friends. Call your soul back from people that manipulate or control you. Call your soul back from your workplace. You know, here's another really big thing here, too, is call your soul back from all addictions. Oh, I just can't quit eating those Kit Kat bars. Well, you may need to qu uh, call your soul back. You call your soul back from the lust for Kit Kat bars and watch what happens. You can have self-control. By the way, there's still another piece here. Oops, but I probably shouldn't mention that now, right? Praise the Lord. You know? By the way, you can do that too. You know, speaking about candy bars or whatever else like that or, or whatever the addiction might be, cigarettes, call your, call your soul back from your cigarettes. 
Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, I call my soul back from Paul Mall. I call my soul back from the Marble Man, even though he's a pretty handsome cowboy. You better call your soul back, because even that handsome cowboy caught cancer from that, right? Call your soul back from your favorite drink, your favorite beer. I'm speaking from experience now, right? You may need to call your soul back from Budweiser or Miller Lite or Coors or whatever people drink anymore. I don't know. Right? Let me tell you something. Here, here's another testimony, too. When I was, uh, I was uh, stopped drinking going forward, got a lot of deliverance. And one day I'm just walking down the store, and I, I end up walking down the aisle, you know, the aisle with beer on the left, beer on the right, all the drinks or whatever. And, you know, you get deliverance. And what's really funny is when you have the addiction, it's like you can't miss that. You, you, you can't pass that stuff up. You get deliverance, you'll walk right down that aisle, and it's like you don't even think about it, right? The thing is, I'm walking down that aisle one day to get to the back, get to the deli section or something like that, and it was really something because it's like I could feel something reaching out to me from both sides of the aisle. I kid you not, 100% true. And it wasn't something like that was inside of me. It was like I could feel something. It's like something from the side was like calling out to me. And I called right back out to it. It says, nope, I'm away from you. I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said it that loud too, walking down the aisle. I don't care if there were other people there. Nope, nope, nope. Loose angels to cut off all your greasy little fingers. I ain't going there no more. Rebuke you in Jesus' name. Cut that off. And you know, so this is the other thing too. When we have idols or when we have addictions, people are like, oh, I just can't resist. Call your soul back in Jesus' name. Right? Call your soul back. Okay? Okay? Right? Now, it might be people. Your will. Call your will back in Jesus' name. There's deliverance. Cast the spirits out of your will. You know, cast out those spirits of rebellion. We say in German, trots. You know, this Widerspenstigkeit. Um, boy, I'm trying to find the words in English right now. Uh, you know, just, just this always being against it. You know, it's like this. There's like, it, it seems that these people have this uh, obsess, uh, this oppositional defiant dis- disorder. Call that out. Call your will out of that in Jesus' mighty name. Okay? Call that back in Jesus' mighty name. And your heart? It is amazing where we've let our hearts go. Now let's look at this again, our heart. We need to call that back from people, places, and things where it should not be. In inanimate objects, out of idols. You may need to call your soul out of your pet. Oh boy, all the cat and dog lovers are going to hate me now. Well, call your soul back out of your pet. Okay? Read Romans chapter 1. There's one part in Romans chapter 1 where it talks about they are without natural affection. Okay? You read in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 has a whole list of individuals and what they do when the soul is missing. Okay? When the soul is missing. Okay. Praise the Lord. And you see there, and they're full of the spirit of debate. The spirit of a debate, which is listed in Romans chapter 1, I think it's in verse 26, 27, 28, somewhere there. You'll see that, and these people that do all this stuff, one of the things they're full of is the spirit of debate, spirit of always arguing, spirit of having to debate, 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 debate. And you know what? That debate can get in there that you'll, go, you'll miss it, that everything that God has for you. Jesus Christ himself shows up right in the middle of you, shows up right in front of you and wants to help you. No, but you've got to argue with your neighbor. Yay. Here, here. Golf clap. Yeah, good one. Right. Truth is being broadcast, but you've got to argue with your neighbor. Golf clap. Yay. Oh, you're right. That's good. You're right. Well, you know what? You held yourself back from getting help, and you also held back your neighbor for getting help. You can repent of that later. You can repent of that later. Okay? Right. Spirit of debate. That's all in there. But it's really important, people. How are you going to serve the Lord when your mind isn't there? Okay? The enemy's going to use that. Wow. I tell you what, we talked a lot. We talked a, uh, about a lot of stuff today. How about we go into a time we have some prayer of getting our soul back? Let's do that. We keep, man, in church we've been doing that, calling the soul back. People have been, been getting peace back, right? Oh, and the enemy wants to push back too because what happens when you start getting your what happens when you uh, start getting your soul back? Yeah, the enemy wants to bomb you. You are now dangerous. 
You are now dangerous. You start. You get your soul back, and you start moving in deliverance. You are dangerous. You are one of the most dangerous things to Satan's kingdom on this planet, because you'll be sitting on top of your scooter in the middle of Bali on a summer day, binding and loosing and changing events in the world. And you say, "Not me," and I will say, "Yes, you. Yes, you." So, Father in heaven, in Jesus' mighty name, we just cover ourselves with the blood. Um, with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, we cover our mind, our will, our emotions, Lord, our hearts, our appetite, our intellect, Father, in Jesus' name, our wanter, what we want, what we desire, with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father. And now, in Jesus' name, we loose the angels to go and break anything that's holding our soul captive in any person, in any place, anywhere, Right and anything, any objects in Jesus' mighty name. It may be a country. It may be a childhood. Lord, we, Lord, we ask for the restoration, restoration of the of the soul, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. We pray for the restoration of the soul and the healing of our soul now in Jesus' name. We call it back. We call all the mind back now in Jesus' name. All spirits of insanity get out in Jesus' name, and we call the mind back in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We call that part of our soul in the mind. All of our intellect, the ability to think, the ability to have common sense in Jesus' mighty name. All the demonic insanity, get out now. We command the spirit of legion to leave these people in Jesus' name. And you go where Jesus tells you to go in Jesus' mighty name. All of that come out now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we pray for a restoration of the will, Lord. Lord, we come against all, we just command all the spirits of passivity, all the spirits of lethargy, all the spirits of apathy, all the spirits of resignation to come out of the will now in Jesus' mighty name. We command the spirits of stubbornness and rebellion to come out of the will now in Jesus' name. I will not. Get out now in Jesus' name. We come against the unteachable spirit uh, uh, that has been with these people uh, from childhood on in Jesus' name. All the unbelerbarkeit. All of that now in Jesus' mighty name. You loose God's people and you let them go in Jesus' mighty name. Everything up and out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Loose them. Come on. Everything out. Fall out of agreement with people and call your soul back. Father in heaven, in Jesus' mighty name, we call the soul back. We call our soul out of rebellion. We call our soul, as uh, the Bible says, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, right? So all of you that have been really involved in rich, witchcraft all the time, uh, all that now. Hey, I'm a Christian now, but still full of rebellion. So we call that out now in Jesus' name. We call that out of our soul. We fall out of agreement with it in Jesus' name. Everything out now. All the unteachable spirit, unteachableness. Come on. All that unteachableness that manifested, especially in your school years. All the unteachableness that manifested when your parents tried helping you. Everything out. Come on. All that unteachableness. Everything out now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All unteachableness in Jesus' name. Father, we come against, Lord, we call, we pray for the restoration of our soul in the area of our emotions in Jesus' name. All depression, sadness, sorrow, you must leave the people now in Jesus' name. All emotional connections to our idols, we cut and break those in Jesus' name. We cut all emotional connections to our favorite cigarettes, our favorite alcohol, our favorite sin, our favorite vice. We cut all ungodly soul ties to our favorite time-wasting uh, activities in Jesus' mighty name. Come on. We call our emotions and we call our soul back from fake religion in Jesus' name. Uh, charismatic craziness. This just this religious craziness that's sweeping the church. We call our souls back in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. And we pray that we would have a sober spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Everything out now in Jesus' mighty name. You loose God's people. Let's go. All, all, come on, all demonic distractions in Jesus' name that want to distract us from getting our soul back, our mind back in Jesus' name. Lord, we also call our heart back in Jesus' name. 
We call our heart back from ex-husbands, ex-wives, ex-girlfriends. We call our heart, our heart back from, uh, from the one that got away or lost love. We call all that back out of, we call our hearts back. We call our emotions back in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. We call our soul back from, uh, we call our soul back from any pets now in Jesus' name. We can enjoy a pet. We can love a pet. But to, to substitute human relationship for an animal that's called without natural affection. And we, we lose God's correction and healing on that in Jesus' name. Boy, that's a big one. There are thick soul ties between people and their pets. Everything out now in Jesus' name. Well, they're part of the family. Yeah, They're like our child. Okay, you get in the picture? So, Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, Lord, everything up and out now in Jesus' name. All the animal spirits, all the animal spirits, any animal spirits that came in through witchcraft, occult, or the sorcery, too, in Jesus' name. Lord, we call back any of our souls, Lord, being with the, the vexed. Uh, it, it says we're, that our souls are vexed with the filthy way of living, Lord, of society in Jesus' mighty name. And we lose cleaning and healing and restoration and deliverance in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. We pray that in Jesus' name. Lord, we also come to you now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we call our souls back. We loose them out. Father, we loose angels to go into these empty spaces now and wash them out with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father. Lord, if our souls weren't there, if we were born with parts of our souls missing, Father, we ask you for your download, Lord. We ask that you would install that, the parts of our souls, Lord, and we loose in maturity in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, to help us grow up and to be where we're at, mentally, physically, and emotionally, in Jesus' name. We rebuke the spirits and the demons of insanity. You know what? Go out and find yourself some pigs. We don't care. Get out in Jesus' name. All insanity, mental illness, confusion in Jesus' name, Lord. All that that wants to bind up and chain our brains in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. We pray that, Lord. Father, I pray that these people would prosper as their souls would prosper, Father, like the Bible says in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. And Father, we pray for the restoration of our mind, our will, our emotions in Jesus' name, our appetite, our in intellect in Jesus' name, Lord. We call our soul back from failure. We call our souls back from poverty, debt, lack, want, need automatic failure mechanism in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. We call our soul and our way of thinking and our way of feeling about it out of that now in Jesus' name. Oh, help us, dear Lord. We break all ungodly vows. We break all ungodly witchcraft in Jesus' name, Lord. And Lord, I pray that your wisdom and understanding would rest upon these people in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to stop with that now, Shannon. Praise the Lord. I need to... Great word today, my brother. Praise the Lord. Yep. What shall we title today's broadcast for the archive? I tell you what, let's just call it part two from the previous one. Let's call, um, uh, the, uh, the de I think it was called The Devil Super Soldiers, uh, or, or why, the devil, why the Devil Wants to Delete Your Soul, part two. Why the Devil Wants to Delete Your Soul, Part 2. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Great word, my brother. And ministry. Brother Elvis, I want you to give out your contact information. How do people reach you in the ministry and support it? Well, okay. Well, great, Shannon. Thanks for asking. Uh, you can reach us at elvishcd at aol.com. And that's the email address we, we use for a lot. You can contact me. Uh, there's been a wow, great response and everything, so give us a chance to answer when we can. And that's ElvisHCD at AOL.com. Um, you can support us at PayPal.com. Very much appreciated. Uh, very much appreciated at PayPal.com using ElvisHCD at AOL.com. Now, folks... When this church burnt down over in France over here, in France over here, in the shortest amount of in the shortest amount of time, they were able to collect over one billion dollars for the restoration of that church over in France. Well, I'll tell you what, folks, I was gonna do this at the beginning of the program. I tell you what, 
I'll do that over here for 1% of that, okay? So, and I think with the listeners we have today, we can reach our 1% goal. <laughs> 1% goal of $1 billion. So go ahead and send that on, on in, and wow, watch what we could do with that. <laughs> so praise the Lord. But we can be, uh, so anyway, uh, that's at paypal.com, uh, ElvisHCD, at AOL.com. Uh, we invite your people, we invite all the folks to go over to the Elvis Newhart Network. That's the YouTube channel. Uh, you can listen, you can like, you sub- subscribe, uh, subscribe. We have our we have our subscriber sneak pe- previews over there where you can hear some stuff first. And so, yeah, check that out. Join that happy group of sub- subscribers that is uh, growing daily. And so, praise the Lord. Look to for- forward to hearing uh, hearing from you folks. And uh, yeah, praise the Lord. My friend, I want to thank you for coming on today. I want to encourage everybody to invite a friend out to these programs. Make sure you hit subscribe on this channel and uh, find Brother Elvis right there on YouTube. Hit subscribe to his channel. And um, with that, uh, God bless you all. Brother Elvis, we love and appreciate you, my friend. And congratulations on our two-year anniversary. Amen. And we've talked on the restoration of the soul on the two-year anniversary. Praise the Lord. Wow. More will come. I just want to encourage the people out there, too, that are listening. Call your soul back. Just watch what happens. The the testimonies that we've been experiencing here in Hamburg at the same time, uh, it's been happening. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to get your mind back, your will back, your emotions back, and get your heart back, folks. 